only weeks after announcing a $4 billion investment in Anthropic, Amazon is apparently training its own AI model that's rumored to be twice the size of GPT-4. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are talking about the latest news and reports out of Amazon, which is, as I said in the intro, that they are working on a model codenamed Olympus that is rumored to be about twice as big in terms of parameter size as GPT-4. So today we're going to talk about the news, as well as the larger context of competition between the big players when it comes to foundation and frontier models. So Reuters sourcing has two people familiar with the matter saying that Amazon's new codenamed Olympus model has 2 trillion parameters. Again, that's about twice what OpenAI's GPT-4 model is rumored to have. According to Reuters sources, the team inside Amazon is headed by Rohit Prasad, who's the former head of Alexa, and who is reporting directly to Amazon CEO Andy Jassy. Prasad's title is Head Scientist of Artificial General Intelligence, and has been able to pull in people from the Alexa AI and Amazon Science team to work in a unified effort. Now, when it comes to the business motivation of this, despite the fact that Amazon already has Bedrock, which is their platform through which they help AWS customers take advantage of or customize existing models, including things like Anthropic, as well as open source models, they believe that having their own unique model within the larger AWS ecosystem could be a desirable offering for their existing customers. Now, to get a little bit of a sense about the larger Amazon context, let's go to a piece from the information from August called How AWS Stumbled in AI, Giving Microsoft an Opening. What the story reports is that even before ChatGPT had been announced, AWS had been developing a similar type of LLM. They had wanted to debut that tool, which they were referring to inside the company as Bedrock at the time, at their annual customer conference in November. However, at the last moment, they had to postpone it due to, as the information puts it, technical snags. Now, in many ways, that ended up being fortuitous because even as that event was happening, OpenAI released ChatGPT, which, as we know, went extremely viral and became the fastest growing software at the time in history. It didn't take Amazon long to recognize that the bedrock model that they had been working on wasn't even close to the model powering OpenAI's ChatGPT. But at the same time, they didn't want to do nothing. In the scramble that ensued, Amazon threw away their old plan of leading with a model-first strategy and instead came up with the approach to build a service which would allow developers to connect with various different large language models, taking an approach where effectively they were arguing from a business standpoint there wasn't going to be a winner-take-all situation, and that especially enterprise customers were going to prioritize having choice and customization options to find the right models for their particular businesses. Subsequent to that, they attached that bedrock name that had been floating around for their model to that new service and started promoting it. Now, Amazon did include some of its own models in that bedrock environment, which they referred to as Titan, but the review of those models has been extremely mixed, to say the least. Now, perhaps because of the reputation of Titan, or just the general sense of how far ahead other companies like OpenAI are, I would say that there's a fair bit of skepticism around the potential for a launch of Olympus. The information summed it up in a section of an article called The Mountain That Olympus Must Climb. They write, Making Olympus successful could be a challenge for Amazon, at least based on the reception accorded Titan. The launch of Titan was delayed last year because it didn't even hold a tiny candle to OpenAI's ChatGPT, and since making one of the Titan models generally available to AWS customers, the feedback about it has only been so-so. They also pointed to a piece from technical lead from Hugging Face technical lead Phil Schmidt, who, as they put it, after side-by-side -side tests involving Titan and other models, concluded that Titan is significantly worse than available open source models as well as software from OpenAI. Now, in terms of when we might get more information about Olympus, it seems like one potential is that it could come at reInvent, which is Amazon's annual company conference, which is happening in Las Vegas at the end of the month. As the information points out, if they don't debut it there, it might make customers in the press think it's even further behind OpenAI. Now, at the same time, Amazon is one of the very few companies who has the resources to actually potentially compete on size for these models, and that's certainly where a lot of the attention has been focused if you look at the chatter on Twitter. John Paris writes, size matters when it comes to training AI, and points to a piece from The Byte, Amazon reportedly training AI with twice as many parameters as GPT-4. The AI wars have become a parameter measuring contest. However, as Meta chief AI scientist Jan LeCun pointed out back in September, quote, a model with more parameters is not necessarily better. It's generally more expensive to run and requires more RAM than a single GPU card can have. Jan also points out that when it comes to GPT-4, it's rumored to be a mixture of experts, i.e. a neural net consisting of multiple specialized modules, only one of which is run on any particular prompt. So the effective number of parameters used at any one time is smaller than the total number. Now, another line of conversation on X is around the fact that this is an inevitable move. That's the way that Boris here puts it. 
He says, I think it's inevitable for them to start competing, and they also need a state-of-the-art model to power Alexa. Additionally, having custom GPTs for every book, author, and topic in the bookstore sounds like a no-brainer. Now, a third thing that people are talking about or asking about is what this suggests of its investment in Anthropic. Faisal Sharif asks, is that just a hedge? And I think that there are a couple things going on here. I don't think that Amazon is totally full of it when they've been talking about the idea that there are going to be multiple winners in this market, and that a service like Bedrock, which gives enterprise customers choice, is likely going to be a valuable part of the equation. Indeed, even despite their huge investment in OpenAI, we've sort of seen Microsoft shift to a similar strategy, for example in the form of their partnership with Databricks, which gives companies access to more models than just OpenAI models. Now the other thing about their anthropic investment is that they're not the only big tech player in that company. Just a few weeks after they announced their partnership, it also came out that Google would be investing a couple billion dollars in Anthropic as well. That obviously suggests a much more blended affiliation and a much less clear business relationship than, for example, OpenAI has with Microsoft. However, for many, the biggest conversation that this brings up is actually a question, summed up best by Playground AI founder Sohail, who says, where is Google? Now, you might remember that back in September, the information and other sources suggested that Google was nearing the release of their much-anticipated Gemini model. The news back then was that they had given a small group of companies access to an early version of Gemini, and that in general, when it came to Google, giving outside developers access meant that Google was getting close to incorporating it into its other services. Now, Gemini matters for two different reasons. For one, many think that it might be the first model to actually exceed the capacities of GPT-4, which has been the benchmark for the industry ever since it came out. I've talked before in previous episodes about what a significant moment I think that will be for the industry, and really is signaling that this first phase of generative AI post ChatGPT coming out last November has come to a close and something new has begun. However, it's not just significant for the industry in general as a way marker of how it's evolving, it's also really significant for Google. I think broadly speaking, there has been a lot of surprise at how far behind Google has appeared ever since ChatGPT came onto the scene. Frankly, the longer that Gemini goes unreleased, the higher the stakes are for that company. Nathan Lands writes, What happened to Google? They seem to have completely dropped the ball. There was a lot of hype about Gemini, then nothing. Meanwhile, OpenAI hit it out of the park, and XAI proved they have a decent product and are iterating incredibly fast. NVIDIA's Dr. Jim Fan writes, Expectation for Google Gemini is now ridiculously high. Gemini has to check off at least one of the following. 120% IQ of textual GPT-4, or 100% of GPT-4 but at half the cost or 2x speed of turbo, or 100% of visual GPT-4, or natively support long videos, and ship the API in Q1 of 2024. Now notably, even that 2024 number is a delay. Kevin Zhu pointed to a recent interview with Google DeepMind CEO Demis Hassabis and writes, Google Gemini's delay to 2024 reiterated. Reorg of Google Brain and DeepMind is taking much longer to work through than the market expected. Then perhaps somewhat snarkily, but also reflecting a lot of people's perspectives, he writes, having the team's CEO go on regulatory capture missions rather than shipping product doesn't help. The Macrosift.eth writes, Google Gemini still in training and fine-tuning, suggesting 2024 launch. Said Demis Hassabis, CEO of Google DeepMind, in an interview with CNBC, we'll see about a 2024 launch. Now, he points to one prediction market that has 49% betting that Gemini comes out this quarter, with another 40% betting that it comes out in Q1. Metaculous markets have the betting at February 3rd, 2024, with a lot of concentration across the Q1 dates. And even with these delays, there are also, as Dr. Jim pointed out, pretty high expectations of how this model will actually perform. Metaculous has another poll, what MMLU benchmark score will Google DeepMind's Gemini model have on release? By way of explanation, the background info writes, MMLU, Massive Multitask Language Understanding, is a test to measure a text model's general knowledge and intelligence. The test covers 57 subjects, which range in difficulty from elementary level to advanced professional level, and it tests both informational knowledge and problem-solving ability. Now, Metaculus expects a benchmark score of 90.13, which would put Gemini ahead of GPT-4. GPT-4, for example, comes in at an 86.5. Now, Brian Romley also talked about where Google's Gemini might try to position itself. He writes, with the release of Grok in GPT-4 Turbo, Google's Gemini will try to place itself in the middle. The focus will be to solve hallucinations by using the search graph that has high weight to the mixture of experts' output. Now, what Brian is getting at is that in addition to the known competitors, like Google and like Meta, Amazon and their forthcoming Olympus also have to deal with Elon's XAI and their new Grok model, along with OpenAI and whatever comes out as GPT-4.5 or GPT-5. 
One of the critiques that I saw of OpenAI's Dev Day was around their prioritization, with some, like AI entrepreneur Bindu Reddy, suggesting that they really should have focused on these more advanced models. Bindu wrote, Rumors are they are training Gobi, a multimodal model, GPT-5, that will be way superior to GPT-4. It's not clear when Gobi will be available, but I suspect it won't be until next year. For what it's worth, Metaculus is betting that OpenAI will announce GPT-5 in about 11 months on October 5th, 2024. What's clear is that the speed of innovation is increasing. This has been particularly on display recently with the launch of Grok. Suhail again writes, It's interesting that it only takes four months now to train an LLM to GPT-3.5 Llama 2 level from scratch. Prior to January this year, nobody had practically replicated GPT-3 still. It doesn't seem like the lead of GPT-4 will last too much longer. And so, as the information put it, Olympus has a heck of a mountain to climb. But at the end of the day, it's not particularly surprising that they're going to take this on. And so really the only question is, when are they going to officially announce it? Come join us on the Breakers Discord if you want to discuss that or anything else. But for now, we'll wrap there. I appreciate you listening or watching as always. Until next time, peace.